ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ್ ಶಿವಾಶಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬಾಧ ಧನ್ಯವಾದ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಫಾರ್ ಜಾಯ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಗುಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಗೀತಾ ಡಿಸ್ಕಶನ್ ಸೊ ವಿಲ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಟೆಂತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ದ ಆಪುಲೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಎನಿಬಡಿ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ from shloka number 11 we discussed till 18 yeah so would somebody like to share i would like to start this yes, from here yeah you can start shloka 11 uh, you uh, mentioned that how lord uh, destroy ignorance with a lot of impure devotee and you mentioned one term samista hmm Uh, you also mentioned how you show special much like you come back to the Parmar Mahin Bhagavan and like Aham Eva that I alone do all my own uh, you refer to 9.2 of uh, Yoga Vishnu Okay Yeah, and you also mentioned that for devotees uh, the Bhagavad Gita is over, over from this point of time but uh, Arjuna uh, talks to krishna so that uh, for the benefit of others hmm yes thank you please okay yes arun pro uh hari krishna bro uh, so uh, we were discussing in 10 point bhagavad gita 10.11 <coughs> that last shloka of chatur shloki uh, that uh, krishna is uh, krishna is talking about path of bhakti with reference to the previous shlokas this says that how um, like helps them to understand uh, the knowledge he uh, like uh, what we can say he uh, eliminates the knowledge example we discussed that like illiterate brahman uh, brahmana of south india he was reciting shlokas of bhagavad gita although he was illiterate but then krishna lights the heart of the devotee staying in the heart with the lamp of knowledge so that is the special uh, speciality of devotee and this is how krishna help, helps them Uh, we were also discussing like uh, uh, that uh, devotee has two parts shraddha and swabhav so mm. although uh, like although they may, in this particular shloka uh, we, like there is discussion of swabhav that there may be some conditionings or contamination but then krishna directly uh, in one sense interferes and helps them helps a devotee in bhakti so uh, like uh, shila vishnu chakravarti thakur says that it is it becomes the anxiety of uh, of krishna that uh, how to clear the heart of devotee that was tesha mevanu kampartham we were discussing that uh, how uh, two shlokas from shrimad bhagavatam 284 um, i tried to remember but now i'm forgetting and uh, that naham tebhyo mana mana api that i i don't know uh, any anyone else but them and devotees no knows no one but krishna so uh, and therefore uh, like Uh, krishna says that he gives protection to the bhakti or to the bhakti of devotees and there we uh, saw wonderful example that shila propad gives that uh, the yogi situation is like monkey a uh, baby of monkey uh, that they have to hold the mother to remain protected uh, but in case of devotees devotees are like kittens where cat takes the responsibility of protecting the kitten and that is the position of devotees while other yogis karmis gyanis they are like baby of monkey so they are in dangerous position while the devotee is always safe so and, that, and this is also the purport of yoga shemam vahamyam that we see here in uh, in this particular purport of uh, shloka of bhagavad gita so this is what i could understand i, I was not there in last class i heard recording so i i like made note from there
Thank you, bro. Very elaborate uh, covering. Okay. Anybody else want to share something from the remaining of the shop? From last part, what we discussed, 12, 6, 18. <clears throat> Many were not there last time. So I don't know if you have heard recordings and uh, if you are remembering anything. Yeah, Bhakti Lila Mathu. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. In uh, 10.12 to 18, uh, Arjuna accepted Krishna's position and uh, request him to hear more about his opulences. So, uh, in uh, 12 and 13 shlokas, uh, you said Krishna accepting Krishna, uh, sorry, Arjuna accepting Krishna's supremacy, where we discussed the different words from uh, Ishopanishad, a papa with them, uh, prophylactic, antiseptic, then param brahma, param dham, param bhavam. Then um, also we discussed the authority also. Um, Narada, Siddha, Devala and Vasa. Uh, here the Arjuna said ki, I accepted your authority and uh, confirm this truth by these uh, various uh, sages. And also we discussed the Guru, Sadhu, Shastra and Bhagavad, Prama, uh, Bhagavad Praman. So you said uh, we discussed the Srila Prabhupada um, uh, quotes here. Books are the basis. Then uh, in uh, 10.14, uh, here, uh, here the Arjuna said, ki, uh, whatever you have spoken earlier, I have accepted, but not for others. Not for others means uh, Devi Devtas or the demons, but uh, basically for non-devotees. Uh, you gave the example of uh, Hiranyakashapu, uh, and uh, means he he know the lord but he he didn't accepted the lord then in indra ka wo parizat uh, flower wala pastime uh, indra knows who is uh, lord and what is his supremacy but he didn't accept his supremacy that time so you said to follow the path of uh, bhakti or to follow the path of uh, arjuna we understood first of all we understood the bhagavad gita then 10.15, uh, here uh, Arjuna said, <clears throat> yeah, same, start it. Yeah, um, we discussed the speculation word, means uh, mental speculation and physical speculation. Philosophical and, speculation. And, speculation. Huh, sorry. Mental speculation and philosophical uh, speculation, and which one is the uh, means uh, which one is the best? Or uh, I miss the yeah, we discussed if men basically philosophical. Mental, philosophical mental speculation is like it is not based on Shastra, philosophical ah. speculation is based on Shastra. We discussed yes. example like uh, whatever here discussion we are doing in Bhagavad Gita, if some verse is connected to other part. Then we connect it to that part and try to explain like Vibhuti Yoga we are discussing here in this chapter. Seventh chapter also we discussed. So whatever concepts we discussed there, we can discuss here also like that we discussed. Yeah. Yes, Prabhuji. In 10.15, Arjuna said, you alone know yourself. Okay, if somebody else also want to share, we can give chance okay. to them. Thank you. Yeah, so 15 to 18, somebody want to share what we discussed? Others who are not sure. Yes, Sri Gangamit. Uh, so, like, uh, not exactly 15, but I was hearing recording. So, just Mataji is uh, related to that. Okay. Uh, you were speaking like uh, hierarchy of, of uh, accepting the authority. Uh, <clears throat> first you told like Bhagwan, Lord is speaking, and that is considered as a uh, like first 
for second you are saying scripture uh, for third you are saying sadhu and then guru hierarchy or yeah yes bro and also bro i i hearing recording i got feel a little confused or might be i was in attitude so uh, i couldn't get that like you saying only like asking uh, the shakti of lord uh, like lord himself take care of that thing but uh, other things like super soul uh, take care like it's something you are saying to you can get directly lord take care and also uh, super soul also take care of other things Yeah, last sentence. What you told me actually, voice is breaking. Maybe you can switch off video. Last part. What you told? Your voice is breaking. Yeah. Uh, Now you can speak. Now it's good. Like for you, is it clear for you? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. Like uh, you are saying for you, like uh, achim the shakti of the Lord. Uh, what other things comes under achim the shakti? that takes care by lord himself direct and other things uh, uh, will be taken care by super soul like that some statement was there but it is related to that arigata Arigata. Prabhuji, there is there is no voice. I think Prabhuji, we have lost connectivity. Okay, I am I am audible. Arigata. You are audible, but voice is little low. And I, I think we have lost connectivity with Adi Baba too. Also, I suppose. Hey, Ishtar. Sorry, I got one call. Did not hear. Anybody remaining to share now? The last I don't know till where Prabhuji shared. For seventeen, eighteen, anybody want to share? Uh, I think last class uh, Dipali Mataji was there. Then uh, Aruna Mataji was also there. Um, Yamuna Vilas Prabhu, you are also there. Last class. Yes, Prabhuji, I was there. Okay, can you count me last part, seventeen eighteen? What did you say? Last part, last part. I was uh, I could not make the note. I don't remember much, but I can okay. share up the fifteenth verse. I think that was already told, man. No? Yeah. So sorry, bro. I have not okay. able to share the last. Okay, no problem. Uh, okay. Anybody else want to share? Prerna Mataji also there, I think. Seventeen eighteen. Okay. So seventeen, we were discussing that uh, now. Arjuna is asking for the benefit of others. Even though the verse is saying "aham," katham ved kaham vid katham vidya aham, vidya aham aham. But he is asking for others. How do we know? Prabhupada has clarified in the purport. Okay, so he is saying that he is addressing Krishna. So Prabhupada has written the statement in the purport. This is the inquiry for common man. The common man who has no love for Krishna cannot always think of Krishna. Therefore. He has to think materially. Okay, that Prabhupada has written in the purport. So that we discussed. That how the verse is, even though Arjuna is asking aham, but he is representing the common people and even not devotees. Why not devotees? Because the devotees already know the Sachidanand form of the Lord. They don't want to meditate on Krishna materially. Materially in the sense what all the vibhutis are material representations of. Extraordinary powers. So, if you remember, eighteenth verse when we were discussing the word vibhuti has come in the verse. So, does anybody remember how we translated that word vibhuti as Rupa has also written in the future purports? But I told one very important phrase there, vibhuti. What is the word there? Anybody remembers? Extraordinary opulences. 
Yes, yes, Madhu. Yeah, extraordinary opulence. Prabhupada also writes it as exceptional opulence like that. Okay. So please remember that word, exceptional opulence. And how it it is, a, what kind of opulence it is? It is either spiritual or material. Okay. Both it can be. Okay. And then Vibhuti as per Sanskrit, we understood that V stands for the word Vilakshana. Vilakshana means, Lakshana means something which is signifying something. Vilakshana means Vishishta, Vishesha, Vishesha Lakshana, extraordinary. Okay. And Bhuti, Bhuti word uh, stands for existence of something, extraordinary existence, extraordinary opulence like that. Okay. So please remember that. So this verse, 18th verse, we were discussing that how Krishna is requested by Arjuna to again speak. Why again speak? Because already it was discussed in 7th chapter briefly. Okay. And that's what we discussed in the beginning of this chapter. Why Krishna is saying, I am going to speak the knowledge which I have not spoken earlier. So it is not that he is going to speak higher than ninth chapter, but he is speaking elaborately compared to 7th chapter. That was the point. Okay. So, yeah. So this verse we discussed that Valdevi Devushan describes the word Vibhuti as the manifestation of Krishna's knowledge and power. Okay. And the word Yoga stands for qualities of the Lord. Okay. So remember these keywords. Okay. Vibhuti stands for knowledge or power and Yoga stands for qualities. Okay. So, having said that, we'll continue our discussion. So, okay, can somebody make me co host? I can share the screen. Okay, so we were discussing 19th onwards, we have to start more. Okay. So, request devotees to hear attentively and make notes and uh, avoid distraction so that uh, we can take most of the benefit of these classes and discussion okay so that we can share also next time what we are discussing otherwise the classes will go on time will pass days will pass months will pass years will pass but we will not be able to imbibe what we are discussing in our life because Prabhupada has given so much of energy and efforts in giving this purpose. And we are trying to directly discuss from purpose. And I'm not trying to speak some other story from here, there, and uh, from other sources. Okay. So as much as possible, directly we are trying to discuss. Okay. So kindly pay attention and uh, give quality time and avoid distraction. And if possible, also keep your video on. Okay. Uh, who is it? Okay. Okay, let's continue. So, Krishna's opulences, Krishna is speaking now briefly. 19 to 42. Briefly means in the sense more elaborately than the seventh chapter, but briefly compared to what Krishna actually is. Okay. So it's briefly in that sense. Okay. So this is section 4. 19 to 42. Just one minute. Yeah. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Hantate Kathe Shami Divya Hi Atma Vibhutaya Radhanyata Guru Sheshta Nasti Anto Vistarasyame. Yes, Sri Ganga Putrabu, please read the translation. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Yes, I will tell you 
of my my splendorous manifestation but only of those which are prominent o arjuna for my opulence opulence is limitless yeah so shri bhagwan was a proper they explained this shri bhagwan word the possessor of the six opulences earlier so we are not discussing again so now krishna is saying divya this word divya he has used for what this is adjective visheshan to what atma vibhutayah atma stands for krishna himself okay person vibhutayah extraordinary opulences okay so divya propada is translated as divine so this has two two meanings here as we discussed it can be either spiritual or it can be material okay so both kind of opulences he is going to describe here okay and what kind of explanation he is going to give pradhanyatah okay whatever is the pradhan or the like most extraordinary or few of them like that which are principal like that okay and purushrestha okay so the best among the purus so arjuna himself is also one of the vibhutis he will explain so he is among the purus he is shrest and na asti anto na asti there is no nahi hai na asti kya ant ant nahi na asti anto what what is there there is no end to something what vistarasya me something related to me what to my extent okay there is no end to my extent okay so that's why i will speak only principally that is the meaning of the words okay so this is a request of arjuna to speak of his opulences and krishna agrees and he is going to speak of the principal opulences Please read. Oh, Hanta, out of mercy, I will tell you about the Vibhuti. We'll speak of the cheap one, one, because there is no end of their number. <clears throat> Vibhuti is used for Vibhuti. Then, in a plural, associative, this Vibhuti. these are excellent divya not like grass or brick the word vibhuti includes both material and spiritual manifestation of power of the lord <clears throat> because they because they all arise from shakti from the shakti of the lord they should all considered as worthy of meditation as a form of the lord form of the lord though some are preferable to others Yeah, so very important point here. These two points are one. So one is that these vibhutis are in the category of either material or spiritual, okay. And they are manifestations of the power of the Lord, okay. As we discussed earlier, vibhuti is either knowledge of the Lord or power of the Lord, okay. So now here he is saying they all why they are considered vibhuti because they all arise from the shakti of the Lord, power of the Lord, basically same thing, okay. And they are worthy of meditation because they are connected to the Lord. But for whom? Not devotees. Common people. Okay, they are worthy of meditation for common people. Okay, so just to keep the things in place, uh, going back because some of you might have missed the class. Yeah, see it. So Arjun, out of mercy, because he is a Vaishnava devotee, is opening for common man the understanding of all pervasiveness of the spirit of the Supreme Lord. Okay. so he addresses krishna specifically as yogin because krishna is the master of the yoga maya by which he is covered and uncovered to the common man okay so the common man who has no love for krishna cannot always think of krishna therefore he has to think materially what is material thinking he is called vibhuti yoga that seeing the energies of the lord in the material world okay and this common man is not devotees why because devotees don't think of Actively in the material forms in the world in the material world, they think as the Lord is a Satchidananda Vigraha, Yashoda Nandan, Devaki Nandan, Govardhan Dhari, like that they think. Okay, they don't see the people, uh, they don't see the material things as the Lord. Okay, so just to make the context clear. Yeah. 
Yeah. Continue. I will speak about my vibhutis, which are which are remarkable, not like grass and bricks. I will speak of the cheap ones, since there is no end to the to describing them all. The word vibhuti should be understood to to mean powerful objects which exceed the Lord's sense of control. Common and refined atoms will be described in their capacity as a vibhuti. Yeah. So again, now he is saying Valdavidya Bhushan uh, is saying similar thing what Trishula Vishnu Chakravarti told. And he is saying he will define the principal ones, chief ones, Pradhanyataha. And there is no end. So he said that Nastyanto. Okay, that's right. And then he is defining what is word Vibhuti, how it should be understood to mean powerful objects or extraordinary objects. Okay. Which exhibit the Lord's sense of control. Like that. Okay. So, what kind of items will you define? Common and refined items. Okay. So, refined items will be like uh, best among the uh, the class, best among all, or best of the class. Okay, best of the class. Like among the elephants, I am Airavat. Okay. Like that. Yeah, continue. All of the all of this should be thought of as the Lord Lord self to some degree in that they suggest the power of the Lord of all the things. The approved direct forms of the Lord have been described conclusively. Those forms are useful for meditation as they are. They should not be considered like the limited representations of the Shakti which are mentioned in this chapter. Yeah. So, they are supposed to be thought as a Lord's self. To what degree? Not full degree, some degree. Why? Because they are either material representations or spiritual representations. Okay. They are representations. Okay. Like that. So they are not completely the replacement of Lord. Like Lord will say, I am the uh, Ucheshrava, horse, or Gairavata, elephant, among the elephants. So it's not that now we'll start worshipping Airavata. No. It's representing that Airavata is having some extraordinary power or opulence or skill that is coming from the Lord. So devotees think how? They think, oh, Airavata is having such power. So how much power the Lord will be having? having? So I worship the Lord. The devotees think like that. But these common people for whom this section is there, what they think? They think, oh, yes, Airavata is so powerful. So let me worship Airavata and also get the power. So common people will think like that. Okay. But devotees may not think like that. Yeah. So the approved direct forms of the Lord have been described conclusively. So where have been the direct forms described? This has been described in the previous sections, like in the Chatu Shloki also, Lord has described. And direct forms have been described as the Goiya Tamam. The most Goya among all. Okay. So that is Goya Tama. Okay. Like that. And what are the forms? These are to the some degree. These are called Goya Tara. If you remember, in the beginning of this chapter, we discussed they are Goya Tara. Okay. These are Vibhutis are Goya Tara. Okay. Which are the Gyan aspect of the Lord. But this Goya Tama is the Vigyan aspect of the Lord. Okay. Where he is directly the uh, Lord of Vrindavan or Dwarka or, or Vaikuntha, like that, the personal form of the Lord, the four handed or two handed form. Okay, so these forms are useful for meditation. Which forms? The direct forms, okay, Krishna of Vrindavan or Dwarka, but not the forms like Airavata and Uchaishrava or other representation of Vibhutis. Okay, so these forms are useful for meditation. That's what Baldevidya Bhushan is clarifying. Okay, not Vibhutis. Vibhutis are not useful for meditation. For whom? For devotees. Okay. But for common people, the vibhutis are useful for meditation. Okay. That's what we saw in the Srila Prabhupada's purport to verse number 17. Okay. So they should not be considered like limited representations of, of the Sakti. What, what is this they referring to? 
What is this? There, there is for over which one? Common people. It's a uh -huh. No, not both answers are wrong. <laughs> Those who are hearing, I think they, they can. Who is the representations? Okay. Who is the maybe maybe Paramat Paramatma form or indirect form of the Lord, not as Govardhan Dhari or. Okay, see the statement. They should not be considered like the limited representations. What is not considered as limited representation? The vibhutis which are mentioned in the later part. Uh, vibhutis are limited or not limited? They are not limited. They are not limited. They should okay, not be considered as limited. Yeah, Prasanna Gopalgu, uh, you can repeat. Yeah, they should not be considered as a limited representation. Uh, so who are they here? Vibhutis or the direct forms? Vibhutis. Vibhutis. Nice. Direct, direct forms are already uh, unlimited. Uh, they are uh -huh. already magnanimous, but Vibhutis direct. also should not be considered as limited. Okay. See here. Okay. Uh, all those, sorry, all of these should not should be thought of as a Lord's self to some degree. This statement is about what? He is explaining which term? Vibhuti. Okay, now Vibhuti is being explained. So now Vibhuti, he is said, saying that it is like some some degree it is. So some degree means can we say it is limited? All of you agree? Yes, so this is limited. So the approved direct forms of the Lord have been described conclusively. Okay, they are described in ninth chapter and end of this chapter also. Okay, this chapter end also they will say direct form. The direct forms are not limited, they are unlimited. This is clear, I think, for all. They are unlimited forms. Why? Because they don't have the limitation of some representation of or some degree representation. They are unlimited. Now he's saying those forms are useful for meditation as they are. Which are these those forms? These those forms are direct forms. That's what I explained here. Okay, they are not referring to vibhutis. They are not vibhutis. They should not be considered like limited representation. Now this again, they is representing direct only. The statement is continuing. There is no mention about vibhuti here. They should not be considered like limited representation of his shakti. Okay. Which are mentioned in this chapter. So, they are not about vibhuti. They are also about direct forms only. Vibhuti was explained here and here. Till here. Direct forms are explained here after this. Okay. So, vibhutis are limited representations that we will see in this chapter. They are limited representations, just like one example is Parshuram. So, he is considered as Shakti Avesh Avatar. Means there is some Avesh of Shakti. He is not equal to Lord. Okay. So, yes, continue. So, pass for what? It is not possible to comprehend the greatness of Krishna and his appliances. The, the senses of the individual soul are limited and not to permit him, him to understand the totality of Krishna's affairs. Still, the devotees try to understand Krishna, but not on the principle that they will be able to understand Krishna fully at any specific time or any state of life. Rather, the very topics of Krishna are so relatable that they appear to the devotees as a nectar. Thus, the devotee enjoy them. In, distinguish, in discussing Krishna's affluences and his diverse energies, the pure devotee take a transcendental pleasure. Therefore, they want to hear and discuss them. Krishna knows that living entities do not understand the ex external extent of his affluences. He therefore agrees to state only the principal manifestations of his different energies. The, the word Pradhanayataha principle is very important because we, we can understand only a few of the principal details of the Supreme Lord. For his features are limited, unlimited, 
it is not possible to understand them all and vibhuti as used in this verse refers to appliances appliances by which he control the whole manifestation in the amarakosh dictionary it is stated that vibhuti is indicate an expect, exceptional appliance yeah so very important points propa has told here so here he is explaining pradhanyata that he is going to explain principle because we can understand only a few devotees try to understand the lord as much as possible as he told here okay but one may not understand fully okay and then here he is saying that vibhuti used in this verse refers to opulences of the lord by which he controls the whole manifestation okay same thing it was told by valdevi dabushan also the lord's power by which he controls the material world okay so these are about which vibhuti these are about the material vibhutis they are not the spiritual vibhutis okay and then he is defining as per amar kosh what is the vibhuti as i told earlier so this word you can remember exceptional opulence okay so this is important so extraordinary opulence or exceptional opulence visisht or vilakshana vib vilakshana bhuti okay like that yeah continue the impersonalist or the pantheist pantheist cannot understand the exceptional opulence of the supreme lord nor the manifestations of his divine energy both in material world and in the spiritual world his energies are distributed in every variety of manifestation now krishna is describing what can be directly pursued by common man thus thus part of his variegated energy is described in this way yeah so now again krishna sorry propad is saying that impersonalist or pantheist so what is pantheist anybody knows it's uh, like it's those who follow those who follow the philosophy of pantheism that is believers of many gods hmm correct yeah so those who are multiple god worshipers okay so they cannot understand the what they can understand the vibhuti yoga okay they cannot understand <clears throat> nor the manifestation of his divine energies both in the material world and the spiritual world his energies are distributed so we will see the examples which are going to come in the further shlokas so we'll categorize them as the vibhuti in material world and spiritual world so all the vibhuti is in the material world we'll say that as number 1 and spiritual world those vibhuti will come we'll mark them as number 2 and they are having a lot of variety okay and now krishna is this is important point now krishna is saying what can be directly perceived by the common man again thus part of his variegated energy is described in this way so again this is not the direct meditation or active meditation of devotees this is for the common man who are not yet devotees and they want to see krishna in the world okay as the material power or material vibhutis like that okay so that is going to be described in this chapter okay 20th shloka aham atma gudakesha sarva bhuta uh, one question yes bro uh, like on this point only like a question arose that the last sentence which you said that it is not for the devotee so is it hmm. for new devotees because when we see lord chaitanya chaitanya hmm. mahaprabhu it is said that uh, whenever he would see some river flowing he would feel it as yamuna or whenever he see some hill uh, he would call govardhan so he is seeing uh, krishna in everything hmm. so how to understand your last statement that this is not for the meditation of devotees yeah see there is a example as you gave lord chaitanya na so he is seeing uh the ordinary okay not here somewhere on side right ordinary objects it may not be vibhutis of the lord okay just any ordinary object he is seeing as spiritual okay like govardhan or seeing the sea and he is thinking about yamuna like that they may not be vibhutis ordinary objects i am saying okay but here what are described these are not ordinary objects these are extraordinary objects so these are extraordinary objects and these people are connecting to energy of lord not the lord 
they are connecting to the energy of the Lord. See what Prabhupada written has. His variegated energy is described. Not variegated personality. There is difference in seeing the energy and seeing the person. So these people who are not yet devotees, because devotees, they will see the Lord in a personal form. So they see these extraordinary objects which are the energies of the Lord, invested his energies, and they are connecting to the energy of the Lord, not the person Lord. But when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is doing, so he is connected to the energy or the person? Yes, true. Pardon me, uh, To the person, he is seeing it as Krishna himself. Yeah, he is seeing so that is described as okay, Thavar Jangam Dekhi Na Dekhi Tara Murti Sarvatra Hoi Nij Ishta Deva Spurti. That is called the stage of Prema. Okay, so what Lord Chaitanya is doing is not a normal vision of the Lord, but it is called Premanjana Chakshu. Okay, he is Lord himself, but he is acting as a devotee. So we are describing as a devotee. So that is the stage of Prema where everything is seen as the Lord's manifestation, like Radharani. When she sees the trees and she sees the sap on the trees, she tells that, oh, these trees are having ecstasy and they are shedding the saps. But trees are not having any ecstasy there because they are in Shantrasa. But Radharani is superimposing her ecstasy on them. Okay, like that. Or the bumblebee, she is crying for Krishna. Like that she says. But that is not bumblebee thinking. That is Radharani's ecstasy. She is superimposing on the bumblebee. That we have to understand. But Lord Chaitanya also in the same mood, he is superimposing his ecstasies on these ordinary objects. Okay. So this is a completely different thing, which is a spiritual, completely spiritual thing at the stage of Prema it comes and ahead. Okay. But these are the things when we are going, seeing here, these are people who are with some material consciousness, not yet devotees. They are seeing some extraordinary objects in which Krishna has invested his power and they are trying to connect to the energy of the Lord. And by doing that, sometime by getting the association of devotees, they can understand, yeah, these are actually energy of the personal form of God. That is the difference. Does it answer, bro, something? Uh, yes, sir. as far as I understood, uh, the Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu part I understood clearly. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, as a sadhaka, when we see anything, like sometimes it is said that uh, we should also think it as energy of the Lord. So we think as energy of personal form of the Lord. But when outside people see or some impersonalist, they see it just an energy, mm -hmm. energy of some supreme, but not of Lord, not of Krishna. Is it like yes. this? Yes, yes, yes. They don't connect so, it to person Krishna. Devotees connect it to the person Krishna and worship that person. So these ordinary people will not worship the person Krishna. But devotees will connect it and worship the person Krishna. That is the difference. Okay, Prabhuji. Thank you. Okay. So I am not saying that these are not useful for devotees, but I am only saying they are not active meditation of devotees. Okay, while they are doing meditation, in chanting or any other devotional service, they don't think that I am doing it for the Aravata, I am doing it for that form of the Lord, I am doing it for uh, the Omkara, not like that. Or they don't start chanting Omkara. They understand, yeah, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra only to be chanted, that comes in Parampara. But Omkara also is invested with energy of the Lord, so let me chant the Mantra of Krishna, which is given in my parampara, that is Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Like that they think. But the common man, he will chant Omkar only. Like that. So, like, uh, can we see, like, uh, active meditation, does it mean, like, can we see a, a, a hill? And, it, of course, it will, it, it may not come, or it will not come from inside, but can we think, oh, it's an energy of Lord, energy of Krishna, this uh, hill? Or can we compare it with Govardhan? Uh, like, as far as, uh, some meditation or uh, as far as our thinking is concerned. Can we do it like that mechanically at least? Is it allowed in bhakti? Yeah, that sadhana is not prescribed as, as per our Nectar Devotion is the book which guidebook which follow for sadhana. So that kind of sadhana is not prescribed for Vaidhi Sadhakas. What is prescribed is the panch, the 64 limbs in that five limbs are very important. Uh, so Nam Sankirtan, Sadhu Sangha, Bhagavad Shravan, uh, Mathuravas, Shrimurtaya, Sadhya Shravan, Sadhya Sevan, like that. So these five things are prescribed mainly for sadhakas and nine limbs as we know, Shravan, Kirtanam, Smaranam. So yeah, these are like indirect way of meditating on the Supreme Lord, but uh, it's not prescribed sadhana. That's what I can say. Oh, Guru, understand. Hare Krishna.
अहम आत्मा गुड़ाकेश सर्वभूताशय स्थित अहम आदिश्च मध्यम च भूता नाम अंत एव च ओके प्रसन्न गोपाल तो ट्रांसलेशन आई एम द सुपर सोल ओ अर्जुन सीटेड इन द हार्ट्स ऑफ ऑल लिविंग एंटिटीज आई एम द बिगिनिंग द मिडल एंड द एंड ऑफ ऑल बीइंग्स या सो नाउ कृष्णा इज नाउ स्पीकिंग अबाउट हिज विभूतिस सो फर्स्ट ही इज स्पीकिंग अबाउट द सोर्स ऑफ द विभूतिस फ्रॉम वेयर ऑल द विभूतिस इन द मेटल वर्ल्ड आर कमिंग सोर्स ऑफ ऑल विभूतिस सो ही इज डिस्क्राइबिंग दैट द थ्री फॉर्म्स ऑफ विष्णु सो सर्वभूत आशय स्थित हाई इज हैविंग थ्री मीनिंग्स व्हाट आर द थ्री मीनिंग्स सो देयर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ आत्मा ओके सो व्हाट आर द थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ आत्मा द फर्स्ट वन इज द कारण दक्षय विष्णु ओके द सेकंड आत्मा इज द गर्भोदक्षय विष्णु एंड थर्ड आत्मा इज शिरोदक्षय विष्णु ओके सो द कारण दक्षय विष्णु एज वी नो He is the Sarva Bhuta Asha. See what is the meaning Sarva Bhuta Asha of all living entities. Asha Sthita situated within the heart. So he is the Atma of the whole material creation, whole material world. Garuda Daksha Vishnu is the Atma of the universe, and Shiva Daksha Vishnu is the Atma of every living entity. Okay. So what is the meaning of this? If the if the Karnataka Vishnu is not present, then the material world itself will not be activated. The whole material creation will not be activated because the whole material creation is coming from him. So he is the Atma or active principle of that. Garbhadaksha Vishnu, he is the active principle of universe. As we know, the universe is created by Mahavishnu or Karnataka Vishnu. But after he glances and then enters it as Garbhadaksha Vishnu, the universe is activated. Right before that, it's not active. And then Shri Raghavendra Vishnu, we know that he is there as a Paramatma. So as soon as the Paramatma leaves, the Atma also leaves the body, and then the living entity is dead. Correct, like that. So first the Paramatma leaves, so he is the active agent basically. So these are the three Atmas of the body. So one is metal world, the second is the universe, third is the living entity. Okay, so these are three meaning. Am Adisya Madhyamcha. This is another concept. So I am beginning, middle, and end of all the beings, like that. Okay, so he is explaining the source of all vibhutis are these three Vishnus. Okay, like that. Mm. Yeah, please read. We are muted, Prabhu. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first, you should think of me uh, alone as the cause of this uh, vibhutis by using just one of my portions. Yeah. So he, again, he is saying the source or the cause of these vibhutis are that my portion. What is this my portion? Expansions. Ah, uh, yeah. These three Vishnus. Yeah. These are his portions. So he is explaining here. Karan Daksha Vishnu is the soul of the prakriti. Okay, that's right. I told. And uh, Garu Daksha Vishnu is the antaryami of the the universe. Virat basically. Shiva Daksha Vishnu is the all the living entities. The same thing which I told. Yeah, please read. In this verse, Arjuna is addressed as Guda Kesha, which means uh, one who has conquered the darkness or of sleep. For those who are sleeping in the darkness of ignorance, it is not possible to understand how the supreme personality of Godhead manifests Himself in various ways in the material and spiritual worlds. Thus, the thus this address by Krishna to Arjuna is significant because Arjuna is uh, above such darkness. The personality of Godhead agrees to describe His various opulences. Krishna first informs Arjuna that. He is the soul of the entire cosmic manifestation by dean of his planar expansion. Or sorry, yeah, primary so what, expansion. Yeah, what is his primary expansion? He is talking about. Anybody can tell? No, no, he is talking only of one of them. Mahavishnu. Karnodakshay. Ah, yes. Entire cosmic 
yeah so entire cosmic manifestation who is the atma so that is yeah ma vishnu or the karana daksha vishnu yeah so again yeah he again he is pointing out this fact that this is present in both the material and spiritual worlds so the vibhuti is really present in both material and spiritual worlds like that yeah the total material energy is not the cause of the creation actually mahavishnu enters into the mahat tatva the total material energy he is the soul when mahavishnu enters into the manifested universes he again manifests himself as a super soul in each and every entity now yeah. so this is again he is saying as a super soul as a shirodaksha vishnu yeah yes as stated in the subal uh, subal upanishad prakruti adi sarva bhut श्रीमदभागवतम that there are three vishnus they consider that there is only one vishnu so here is this one statement given by shri prabhupad he has quoted from baldev devushan this is a proof basically if anybody asks we can give that uh, where is the proof that three vishnus exist so vishnu to trini trini means three rupani okay so we can say out so there are three vishnus who are they so prabhupad has mentioned karvadakshay ज्योतिषाम रविम शुमान मरीचीर मरु तामस्मी नक्षत्र नाम अहम शशि so as we discussed earlier so here uh, we have pointed out that two types of vibhutis are there first is the material world vibhutis and the spiritual vibhutis or basically those which are having material qualities and those which are like spiritual entities so material entities and spiritual entities like these two categories we can make so so first uh, one let us say it as uh, the which is a material entity and the second category will keep it as the spiritual entity so these are two categories we will keep and in that sub category we will keep okay first uh, category would be the best of the class okay so among the one class will be mentioned like aditya now okay so among all the adityas aham vishnu okay so i am vishnu he is the best among them like that and the second sub category we will keep who is the controller of the class he is controlling the class he may be best also he is controller of that class like that. okay and then the third sub category we will keep he is the as we discussed in seventh chapter the essence or active principle okay if that is not there the whole thing will not work okay this category we will keep and uh, fourth b we will keep it as the source source of all okay so <clears throat> all all of you will answer these questions so answers will be either as 1a 1b 1c 1d like if it is a material entity then we'll say it as one and in the material entity whether it is best of the class or it's a controller of that class or it is the essence of that whole group or it is the source of that group okay like that and if it is spiritual entity then we will say 2a 2b 2c or 2d okay so like that we are going to categorize the whole thing so all answers will be given by all of you so kindly attentively 
understand this topic, this further verses, and uh, randomly we'll ask questions to devotees and respected devotees can answer. Okay. So please note down in your notebooks these categories. Any any questions about this category? Anybody is having any doubt or question about this? Because if you don't understand, you may not be able to answer. What is I think one example will be required to understand? Yeah, this, this twenty one verse I am going to tell Roji. Ah. This twenty one, yeah, <laughs> obviously. Twenty one verse I am going to explain. Then after that we can start the exercise. Okay, so Sabji, you can, can make. You... Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Sorry, I, was, uh... I was just saying that you can maybe have a notebook if you have. In which you can write two categories. One column you can make the material vibhutis entities, and second column you can make the spiritual entities, spiritual vibhutis. And in that you can uh, write as uh, okay. What I'm saying is you can make something like two columns: the material vibhutis and spiritual vibhutis. And you can keep for A class, which is B, C, and D. Like this, something you can make. So A represents what best among the class, B represents the controller among them, C represents the essence or the active principle among them. So D represents the source of all like that. You can make in your notebook, so it may be helpful. Yes, Matthew, please. Pranji, I did not understand these subcategories uh, nicely. I mean, if you can give an example. Yeah, example, we'll discuss, no? we'll discuss it. This, yeah, this verse we'll discuss. I'll not be able to answer then. <laughs> Yeah, we'll discuss now. Yeah, so Adityana Maham Vishnu. Okay. Of the Adityas, I am Vishnu. Jyotisham Ravi Ramsuman. Of lights, I am the radiant sun. Okay. So Ravi stands for sun. Okay. So Jyotisham, among those which are giving light or luminaries, as Prabhupada has told. Okay. Marichir, Marichir Marutam Asmi. Of the Maruts, I am Marichi. Okay. And among the stars, I am the moon. Okay. Among all the stars, I am moon. So, nakshatra. Nakshatra is star. Sashi. That all of us know. Sashi is moon. Like that. Okay. So, here, if you see of the Adityas, I am Vishnu. So, Vishnu is considered the best among the Adityas. Correct. But again, Lord Vishnu himself is not the material entity. He is himself the Vishnu Tattva. So, he will be in the category 2 and he is best among them so we will say it as 2a okay he is best of the class like that okay and uh, of the lights i am radiant sun so sun is uh, here uh, we can consider it as like uh, the material entity the material sun we are not talking about the surya narayan okay the sun itself okay then uh, for that we can say it as best among those which are the category 1 and we can say A, okay, among the class, he is best, okay, of those which give light. And of the Maruts, I am Marichi. So, he is uh, neither, like, Marichi is not a pure devotee. So, we will not consider him as the spiritual entity. But when the things will come like uh, do it, devotees of the Lord, we will take them as a spiritual entity, okay. So, endowed with the spiritual Shakti of the Lord. So, he is not a pure devotee. So, we will keep it as category 1. Okay, and then best among the Maruts, so 1A. So, like that. And among the stars, I am the moon. So, again, this is 1A. Okay. So, best of the class. Any questions on this? Prabhuji, what is Marut? Yeah, Prabhupada will explain in the purple. And here controller of the glass or source of all to me it makes one sense if you can just explain the difference yeah basically the control of the class means he is controlling the whole group like that whatever group is mentioned he is controlling them all like that and source of all means from him only the whole group comes when the example so, will come it will be more clear yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kishore Mother Pro, could you read? Yes, Prabhu. There are 12 Adityas of which Krishna is the principal. 
among all the luminaries shining in the sky, the sun is the chief, and in the Brahma Sahita, the sun is accepted as the glowing eye of Supreme Lord. There are 50 varieties of wind blowing in the space, and this wind's the controlling duty, Mariti represents Krishna. Among the stars, the moon is most prominent at night, and thus the moon represents Krishna. Yeah, so 50 varieties of wind blowing. So these are Maruts, as you asked. Okay. And these are the same. Uh, uh, yeah, just Maruts. Yeah. Mm, okay, next verse. Veda nam sam vedvasmi, deva nam asmi vasava, indriya nam manaschasmi, bhuta nam asmi chetana. Ah, okay, one devotee can read the whole thing. Kesha Madhavru, are you okay to read? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, because purpose will be very short and just translations will be there. Okay, I will read this look out for purpose translation. Just translation. Okay. Yeah. Of the Vedas, I am Samaveda. Of the demigods, I am Indra. King of heaven, of the senses, I am the mind, and in living being, I am the living force that is consciousness. Okay, yeah, so we'll read the purport, then we'll come back to Shloka. Yes, please read. The, the difference between matter and spirit is that matter has no consciousness, like the living entity. Therefore, this consciousness is supreme and eternal. Consciousness cannot be produced by a combination of matter. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put the categories here. Okay, so okay, so what we can do here? Uh, somebody can volunteer to put. Okay, Yamuna Lasko, would you like to volunteer for this shloka? Which what do we which category? As well yes, for our yes, yes, I can try. So yeah, four generally verse will have four things. So. So you have to say about this among the Veda now, among the Vedas, Samveda. Samveda is which category? You mean material or spiritual like that? Ah, uh, yeah, one A, one B, or two A, two B, like that you have to okay. answer. Okay, please. Two A. Two A. Okay, you are saying Samveda is a spiritual, yeah. Okay. Why why you say spiritual? Because uh, Lord Himself, like Vedas are spiritual, right, Pruji? Correct, yeah. yeah. I'm asking you. Yeah, I'm asking you in the sense not I'm saying that your answer is wrong. Why do you consider it as spiritual? I'm saying uh, because this uh, uh, four Vedas they also re represent the uh, personality, uh, like uh, uh, where it is mentioned. I think in the Matsya Avatar pastime also it is mentioned that previously that the four Vedas uh, they as a personified form they offered uh, prayers. To the Lord, so that's what mm -hmm. I remember. They are yeah. a personified. Yeah. Uh, okay. Vedas, See, so. yeah, what you answered is uh, right, partially right. See, here when we discuss in the previous shloka, we have to understand there is difference between representation and uh, representation of Lord. That is one thing. Okay, this is called vibhuti. And second is not the representation, but it is a manifestation of Lord. Manifestation. So this is vibhuti as well as directly the law form of the Lord. There is a difference here. So the representation of the Lord is not par. It's okay. Representation of the Lord is vibhuti, which is, if you remember, one of the purports said the word some degree. Okay, you remember that? I don't want to go back, but it said that to some degree it is representation of the Lord. But manifestation of the Lord is not to some degree, it is equivalent to the Lord. Okay, it is equivalent to the Lord, we have to understand. So when we are saying, suppose here one example I will tell, Marichi. So Marichi is a representation of the Lord here. Okay. But when we are saying that Vishnu is a representation of the Lord or manifestation of Lord? Manifestation. He is the Lord directly. Similarly, when we come to this shloka, Vedanam, Sam Vedvasmi, the Vedas are 
not representation of the Lord. They are coming from the breathing of the Supreme Lord. You might have heard. They are directly coming from the breathing of the Lord. So they are equivalent to the Lord. Okay, They are not partially Lord. So we have to put it in a spiritual category only. A spiritual entity. Yeah. And among the Vedas, the Sam Veda is best. So best of the class. Okay. Is it clear? Anybody has any question on this? Or it is too much, too much difficult? Then uh, if anybody is having any question, they can ask. Nobody has any questions. Everybody is understanding that means. Pranamati, are you able to follow? Or difficult? Sorry, Prabhuji. I have too much disturbances today. Okay, okay. okay no <laughs> so I'm not able to concentrate, but I'm okay. trying my best. Okay, here that is possible. Yeah. Okay. So yes, you want to want to continue? Yes, Prabhuji. The second one uh, of the demigods I'm in the so this comes under category two B. Yeah, among the demigods, I am the heavenly king Indra. Okay, okay, well, you are considering him as spiritual? Yeah. Okay, spiritual what, entity. Yeah, okay. On what basis? The demigods are also spiritual entity. They, they are not material entity, right, Puji? They are not a material yeah, they entity. Are, they are devotees of the Lord, yeah, okay. Yeah, they are not pure devotees. Only pure devotees will, we are considering in this category. <laughs> Uh, sorry, Prabhuji, what do you mean? Only pure devotees? Pure devotees means uh, those who are like Indra, as we understand, generally he is not pure devotee. Okay. And uh, he is a karma mishra bhakta, we say. Okay. So, Prabhuji, just a clarification. What is spiritual yes. entity? Is it like just a pure duty or a pure devotee? Pure yeah, that's what I told you. It's either Vishnu Dattva or pure devotee. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so, maybe I can write it before here only. So the, in that sense, otherwise everything will become spiritual. <laughs> yeah, everything, that's what, it was confusing. Yeah, yeah spiritual entity will be like only Vishnu Dattva. Okay. 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 Means vice versa, everything else is material actually, apart from uh, ah, yes, yes, the yes, pure duty. Yes, yeah. 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 yeah, correct. Only these two entities you are considering. Vishnu. Okay. Okay, among the devtas. He is uh, Indra. So we are putting it as one. And among one. them he is best. So one, let's see. Okay. Yeah. Yes, third one, would you like to try? Among the senses, I am mind. Krishna is saying. He is, yeah. which category yeah. is? Uh, one B, Proji. Yeah. So B is what? Uh, controller of the class. So yeah. mind controls the senses. Yes, so he is the controller. Yeah. And last is Bhutana Asmi Chetana. Yeah, this is what? In living beings and the living force. Living force. It's the same. So this is uh, living force. Just a second. Okay. So you going too much for the what is. <laughs> it's it's, uh, answer, yeah. it's spiritual entity, Broji. Ah, good, good. Yeah, it is spiritual entity. It's two, yeah. and it's uh, C. Okay. C is what? Essence or the active principle. Yeah. If Source Chetana is not there, then yeah, the body, basically the divinity will not be active. Yes, it's active principle. Yes. Uh, thank you, bro. Very nice. Okay. Anybody want to add anything in this? Is you have any thoughts if you want to Maybe, uh, of living yes. beings i was little confused living uh -huh. beings like we and um, we discussed indra he is also living being uh, not a pure devotee therefore we considered material yes bro. yeah correct. so living beings here are we considering spiritual in the fourth class no uh, no no chetana this is the atma no soul okay 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 yeah soul is spiritual no Uh, is it okay? Fine, yes, baby. Yeah, so the, in that sense, it's a completely spiritual entity. As per, like, obviously, every soul is spiritual, but here, talking about only the soul, not gross body, nothing, not mind, ego, nothing. Yes, baby. Okay. Rudra nam sankarashchasmi vitte shoyakshanakshasham 
वसुना पावक मेरु शिखरी नाम अहम Of all the rudras, I am Lord Shiva. Of the yakshas and rakshasas, I am the Lord of wealth. Who we are? Of the vasus, I am fire, agni, and of mountains, I am mirror. There are eleven rudras of whom Sankara, Lord Shiva, is predominant. He is incarnation of the supreme Lord in charge of the board of ignorance in the universe. The leader of yakshas and rakshasas is Kuvera. The master treasurer of the world, and he is representation of supreme lord. Meru is mountain famed for its rich natural resources. Okay, so somebody like to try for this shloka? You can raise hand also. Nobody wants to try. <laughs> Can I try, Prabhu ji? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Of Rudras, I am Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva, spiritual. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, spiritual. he is a pure devotee of the Lord. Vaishnavana, Vyata, Sambhu. <laughs> then yeah. he is a controller. Yeah. So, B. He is controller of what? This mode of he is in mode of control of mode of ignorance, no? Ah, yeah, yeah. In okay. that sense, okay, okay. Mataji, we are discussing he is controller of the class as we defined, no? B is the controller of the class. Ah, uh, I wrote here a controller of the class based of the class B no, no. controller of the class. So, so sorry, B. Uh, B and she is defense of active no, no, principle. No, 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 one minute. I am clarifying. He is controller of all the. Class means like among the Rudras is Shankara means of yeah. all the Rudras is he controlling the Rudras. So no, yes. he is not controller of the Rudras. So it okay. will be best among the Rudras. So we'll just take it away. Okay. Okay. Yeah, next. Yakshas and Rakshasas material. I'm uh, Yakshas and Rakshas. I'm the Lord of Wealth. So Kubera, Kubera is material. And again, he is the controller of the class. So, B, Prabhu? Uh, no, no, no. He, is, he, he is, yeah, he is master of all, like Prabhupada has written in this, if you can see. The leader, Con he is master, yes. yeah, so he is controller. Yakshas and Rakshasa, Char. Uh? Yes, yes, correct. He, he is leader, he is material. Uh -huh. okay. So, material. Material means, yeah, okay, 2B, you are saying. 2B. No, no, 1B, yeah, 1B. Yeah, one, one B. Huh, one yes, then Vasus, I am fire. It's again material. Hmm. Okay. There are many Vasus. Again, it's like uh, controller of the class, Prabhuji. One A, one one B. No, actually, that is not mentioned like that. Yeah, it's not like controller. So that is one one of the name of the types of vasu okay. that Valdevidya Bhushan has explained. I have not put here. Of the vasus, I am Agni. So uh, one of the name of vasu is Agni. Okay. Like okay. That. So it is like best of the class, we can say. Best of the class. That yeah, is one. one. Yes. Okay. Then among the mountains, I am Meru. So again, it is material one hmm. and based of the class A. Yeah. One okay. Anybody wants to add anything in this? Yeah, no, 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 no. what is Vasus? Yeah, see, there are 12 Vasus who are uh, controller of some of the activities of this material world. Okay, so the detail is there in the purport of. Uh, I think uh, one day with the ocean and all. So, okay. I'll put it in the group too later. Okay, here I will not be able to show because it will take some time and I want to complete this chapter. Okay, I'll put it in the group. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody wants to add anything in about the categorization? <laughs> Hmm. 
पुरोदशा च मुख्यम माम ओशन Indra is the chief demigod of heavenly planets and he is known as the king of heavens. The planet on which he feeds is called Indra. This Pati is Indra's priest. Since Indra is the chief of all kings, this Pati is the chief of all kings. Thus, Indra is the chief of all kings. Similarly, Skanda or Kartikeya, the son of Parvati and Lord Shiva, is the chief of all military commanders. And of all bodies of water, the ocean is filled. Those representation of Krishna only give hints of his greatness. Yeah. So as we told this earlier, that the representation of Krishna give only hints, means what to some degree we are representing. Okay. Yes. So, so somebody would like to volunteer for this? Yes, I am. It's a Brespati among priests. So Brespati is material and priest is best of class. So 1A. Then uh, Kartike, Kartike among generals. So um, he's son of Lord Shiva, but still I think he must be material. 1 and generals, again best of class, again 1A. Question among water bodies. So, again, material and uh, again, best of class 1A. Uh, sorry, I could not hear you actually. I was taking one call. Yeah, can you tell okay. again? Braspati among priests, like 1A material plus best of class. Then Kartike among generals. I was little doubtful because Kartike is son of pure devotee Lord Shiva. Uh, but still, I think material and best of class. And ocean among water bodies, so it's uh, material, and again uh, as best of class. Uh, but I'm little doubtful at as um, it may be a source of all because uh, like every uh, like river goes and mixes into ocean. Uh, but we can't say source. One a one a only like best of class probably. Yeah. Okay. All three. So, all three one. All three one a. Yeah, actually, here Prabhupada said Kartikeya, the son of Parvati, the Lord Shiva, is chief of all military commanders. So he is also controller of all of them, actually. Okay. So in that sense, I think we should tell it as he is a controller of all of them. Okay, so one B. Yeah. Okay, anybody else want to add anything? Maharshi Nam Brigurham. Of the great sages, I am Guru of vibrations, I am the transcendental home of sacrifices, I am the chanting of holy names, Japa, and of immovable things, I am Himalaya. Brahma, the living creature within the universe, creates several sons of propagation of various centers. Among these sons, Guru is most powerful sage. Of all the transcendental vibrations, the Pope represents Krishna. Of all sacrifices, the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, is the purest representation of Krishna. Sometimes animal sacrifices are recommended, but in the sacrifice of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna there is no question of violence. It is the simplest and the purest. Whatever is sublime in the world is a representation of Krishna. Therefore, the Himalayas, the greatest mountain in the world, also represented. The mountain named Miru was mentioned in the previous world, but Miru is sometimes movable, whereas Himalayas are never movable. Thus, the Himalayas are greater than Miru. Okay, yeah. Somebody like to volunteer for this verse?
Yeah, means others can help you. you can try. Shall I try to do it? Yes, Mathi. Uh, before I start, I would like to ask if there is any difference between sages and devotees because I am able to call off of a pastime according to which I think Rigu Muni should be uh, chief of the sons. So to be, I am considering him uh, spiritual because the pastime which I am able to connect it to, uh, the one where he, uh, other sages asked him to test whether Vishnu is the best or uh, Shiva and Brahma. So Vishnu was the best because he was able to tolerate his kick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, considering him as devotee, if I consider him as a devotee, so second, and no, but that uh, chest does not say that he is a devotee, and devotee will not kick on the chest of Lord Vishnu. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, he is not pure devotee. Truth. Yeah, he okay. is not pure devotee. Okay, so yeah, okay, you can read Vigo details in Shrimad Bhagavatam, what was given in the first category. Yeah, so we can consider him at one first category. Yeah, obviously something okay, in between, not material. fully spiritual. Yeah, not fully spiritual. Like we cannot say he is like completely material, like some Himalaya. But yeah, something okay. in between also we are putting in category one only. That's what we are not only pure devotee. We are taking in second category. Otherwise, everything comes to be second category. Okay, so okay. that's why we can take it as one. No offenses to Vrigun. Okay. First, A probably because he is the best among us. Yeah, he's among the best. Yeah, I think like that. Yeah. And of the vibrations on so the sound vibration is always spiritual so second 2a holy name is the mm -hmm. best okay. among all and immovable thing is first a brother okay uh, mountain material and immovable thing okay yeah. and the should be 2a yeah. I think, yeah, this one you told, Mati. Himalaya Prabhuji, I said. So, no, no, this uh, third this line. Third the, line. Oh, okay, okay. In trance. I am the transcendental own of, of, of sacrifices. Okay. So, sacrifices. Prabhuji, like, sacrifices can also be material and spiritual both, na, depending upon the purpose for which we are doing. Yeah, we are so, we are taking the entity who is uh, the out of the class, who is the extraordinary, extraordinary entity in the class, we are taking that entity. Like, here we discussed about Bhrigu. We didn't discuss, discuss about Maharshis. We are talking about Yajna here, right? Yeah, among the Yajna, Japa Yajna. So, Japa Yajna, is it spiritual nature or material nature? We are discussing about that. Because uh, Prabhuji is spiritual. Obviously, yeah. Hare Krishna Mahamadra is spiritual only. Yeah. And, yeah, and chanting of the holy name is the best. So, 2A. Yeah. Okay, anybody has any thoughts on this? Uh, Guru, regarding Om, I was a little confused that mm -hmm. sometimes it is said that Om is source of all. Like every, it's, it is used as a Bij Mantra. So, mm -hmm. can you clarify it? Yes, here Prabhupada has told of all the transcendent vibration, Om represents Krishna. So see, these are like the Vedic Mantra. We are talking about Vedic Mantra. And what is told here is the Nam or the holy name of the Lord. So they are two different things. Okay. So Vedic Mantras have some rules and regulations to be followed. Like Gayatri Mantra and all. Okay. So they have to be given by Guru. And there are a consideration of offenses in them. And the, it, it will nullify if the rules are not followed. But Naam is not like that. There is no rules and regulation. There is no Niyama, uh, no Kala. Okay, And anybody can chant. They, it need not be given by Guru like that. So among the holy name, the Japa, I mean, the Japa of Hare Krishna Mantra is best. And among the Vedic Mantras, Om is best, which is like the Bija. Okay, so that is the difference. So when we are saying about Om is source of everything, is it's like the source of, uh, we can say, uh, I have not read through basically detail about whether it is source of all mantras. Yeah, I have heard, but I'm not sure. If you have some reference, you can give later. Okay, then we can see about that. So now in which category should we put? 
Yeah, I think best of them all. Okay. So it's one A, right? Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. If you if you have any reference now where it's mentioned that it is source of all mantras, I've heard. But if it is somewhere mentioned properly in some Vedas or some verse, some Puranas, then we can take it like that. Okay. And, uh, uh, Om, spiritual, spiritual or material? Which one? Om. Om. Om is spiritual or material? Yeah, spiritual. No? Tra okay, yes. Two way. Yeah, it is transcendental vibration. Prabhupada has told me. Uh, yes. Uh, Roji, this Om Om is Om Kar the Ichi chapter 17 or 18, Bhagavad Gita only there is a description of Om Tatsat and uh, the Om is uh, pronounced uh, at the beginning of all the activities. Somewhere I am also searching, but I am not getting. Do you remember? Yeah, it may be there. Yeah, I have also heard, Prabhuji. I have also heard, but uh, yeah, but I am not sure whether it is source of all. So whether you can put it in the D category. That uh, mm. D, uh, if, if we get, you can just put it in WhatsApp group. We can change it later, no problem. No, no problem. Okay, any other chant, om, and chanting, holding an essence rather than stress. Okay, essence of all. Yeah, essence in the sense that it is active principle. If it is not there, then we cannot chant any other mantra. It is not like that. Without Hare Krishna also, one can chant other mantras. Yeah, Om can be understood like, okay, every mantra considers Om also. Yeah, so it can be considered like C also. Yeah, it is essence or it includes in every mantra. Om Namo Bhagavata Vasudeva. It can be like that also. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ashwatha Sarva Vikshanam Devarshinam Chanaradha Gandharvanam Chitradatha Siddhanam Kapilomani of all the trees, I am the Banyan tree, and of the sages among the demigods, I am Narada. Of the Gandharvas, I am sorry, I am Chitranaga, and among perfected beings, I am the sage Kapila. The Banyan tree, Aswastha, is one of the highest and most beautiful tree, and people in India often worship it as one of their in the daily morning ritual. Among the demigods, they also worship Narada, who is considered the greatest. Devotee in the universe. Thus, he is a representation of Krishna as a devotee. The Gandhara planet is filled with entities who sing beautifully, and among them, the best singer is Chitravita. Among the perfect living entities, Kapila, the son of Devotee, is representative of Krishna. He is considered as incarnation of Krishna, and the philosophy is mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Later on, another Kapila became famous, but his philosophy was artistic. Thus, there is a gulf of difference between them. Okay. Yeah, somebody would like to volunteer now? Who have not told I before? Not. Huh? Yeah, raise hand. Yeah. Who is uh, present vocal? Who is present? Okay. Uh, so, banyan tree. Uh, of the trees, I am banyan tree. Uh, banyan tree is a material. So, it will be a one. And uh, based of the vibhutis. One A. <laughs> Benenti is worshipable. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, sages among sages, the uh, sages among the demigods, I am Narada. So Narada Muni is uh, based of the uh, based of the uh, based of the demigods. So he can be a material only. Same one. Ah, uh, yeah. Prabhupada, if you see, no, Prabhupada, Prabhupada mentioned among the demigods worship Narada, who is considered greatest devotee. Yeah, so generally we consider him as pure devotee. He is uh, like Srimad Bhagavatam also the past time is there. Narad boy transformed into the Narad Muni. So he's pure devotee only. So he's like he's pure devotee. So we can keep it in second category, I think. Controller. Second category oh, spiritual. Yeah. So among them he is best you are saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gandharvas, I am the chief brother. So material and then uh, I don't know whether the Gandharva is based or not. Yeah, Chitrarata is one of the Gandharvas. Yeah. But be not be, may not be the base, no? Uh, so controller yes. source, source is not there. Yeah, see the see purport if you see no, it will be clear. Hmm. So he's saying here he is the best singer. 
he's based oh. among them. So in that basement, yeah, one. Yeah, so he will be based among that class like that. <laughs> yes, Rosie. So now, uh, I, I and uh, among the perfect beings, I just take Kapita. So Kapita is the best among the sages. So uh, one key again. Yeah, he is based on sages and uh, Kapila Muni. Kapila yeah. is considered incarnation, so it should be two ways. Yeah, correct. Kapila is considered an incarnation of Krishna. So he is like uh, Vishnu Dattva only. Okay. And uh, so we will consider him as spiritual only. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So two. And then what you said, Roy, best among them. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Roji. Anybody has any thoughts on this? Okay, we'll go to next shoka. Uchay Shravasham, Uchay Shravasham Ashwana, Vidhi Mam Amrito Dhavam, Ayravatam Gajendranam, Naranamcha Naradhipam. Yes, Prabhu. How hard it is, no way to be Uchay Shravasham. Prabhu is doing the churning of portion of nectar of Lord, uh, Lordly Elephant, I am Ayravata, and among men, I am the owner. The devotees, demigods, and demons, asuras, once took pride in churning the sea. From the churning, nectar and poison were produced, and Lord Shiva drank the poison. From the nectar were produced many entities of which there was a horse named Uchesha. Another animal produced from the nectar. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Another animal produced from the nectar was an elephant named Airava. Because these two animals were produced from nectar, they have special significance in their represent Krishna. Among the human beings, the king of representative Krishna, because Krishna is maintainer of universe and the kings who are appointed on account of their bodily qualifications are maintainer of their kingdom. Kings like Maharaj Yudhishthir, Maharaj Prishit, and Lord Rama were highly righteous kings who always thought of citizens' welfare. In Vedic literature, the king is considered to be representative of God. In this age, however, the corruption of principles of religion, monarchy decayed, and is now finally abolished. Is to be understood that in the past, however, people were more happy and not righteous. Okay. So, yeah, somebody else like to volunteer to categorize? One thing. Mm -hmm. Who has not spoken till now? Um, yeah, Bhakti Lila Mataji. Yeah, I can try, Prabhuji. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ucha Shrava is a uh, one uh, ye. Mm -hmm. And um, Eravat amongst the elephant, again one ye. Mm -hmm. And the king amongst the men, uh, two be. Uh, yeah, you are feeling a spiritual. Spiritual, because in here uh, description may uh, Prabhupada said na Krishna is the maintainer of the universe in representation of Krishna. Mm, yeah, I think we are saying here is Krishna maintainer of the universe and the kings who are appointed uh, account of their godly qualifications are maintainer of their kingdoms. Yeah, all kings may not be spiritually like advanced, they may not be pure devotee, like there are few. Like Yudhishthira Maharaj, Prabhupada has given an example. Maharaj. They are all pure devotees, but may not be all kings. Yeah, and Lord it's Ram. Uh, yeah, I, I, in my understanding, it is not that all kings are spiritual. Some may be spiritual also. So it can be like that. Yeah. Uh, one, uh, and he's controller. Like here, the word is just representative, and you said representative is material uh, in the uh, initial. Right, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was referring to that only. Yeah. So there it was told one is manifestation that is spiritual, but representative is everybody is representative only. Ashwatha also, because people worship it is having some spiritual qualities, but uh, as such in a general tree like that. It's not like Tulsi. Tulsi is like spiritual tree, but Ashwatha is not spiritual tree like that. Okay, anybody has any thoughts on this? In, in purport, that is first paragraph, hmm. Prabhupada is writing, because these two animals were produced from nectar, they have a special significance and they are representatives of Krishna. 
so here the word representative has become like earlier it was clear representative means material mm -hmm. but now prabhupad is saying they have a special significance and they are representative of krishna so it created a little doubt that whether representative no, no, means, like that that means. is for everyone prabhupad is writing here like that it's for everyone everybody is representative of krishna and they have a special significance that's why they are called extraordinary opulence everybody is like that So we'll consider material, right? Um, like yes. horse, rabbit, and ah yes, yeah, rabbit and uchchhrava. Hmm. Yeah, they are material only. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, they are not pure devotees. In future, it will come one of the entities that will be spiritual. I will point it. Ayudana, Hamvai. Monarch is controller or best of. Yeah, monarch is controller, right? No? is controlling na the the entities okay thank you bro ayudanam aham vajram dhenu nam asmi kam dhuk prajanas cha asmi kandarpa sarpa nam asmi vasuki yes bro so i will take this last shloka because my battery is low and so it's my video but after this shloka someone can carry your over okay yes bro of weapons i am thunderbolt amongst kam i am surbi of causes of procreation i am kandarpa The God of Love and of Serpents, I am Vasuki. The Thunderbolt, indeed, a mighty weapon, represents Krishna's power. In Krishna Loka, in the spiritual sphere, there are cows which can be milked at any time, and they give as much milk as one likes. Of course, such cows do not exist in material world, but there is a mention of them in Krishna Loka. The Lord keeps many such cows, which are called Surubi. It is stated that the Lord is engaged in herding the Surubi cows. Kandarpa is the sixth nature of for presenting good sense. Therefore, Kandarpa is representative of Krishna. Sometimes, sex is engaged in only for sense gratification. Such so sex does not represent Krishna, but sex for generation of good children is called Kandarpa and represents Krishna. Okay. Yes. Uh, somebody would like to volunteer for this? Uh, others will help. We'll help you. <clears throat> somebody want to try? Okay, Bruja, I will try. Yes, so no. i think all are falling under the category of one a all are material and uh, all are like best among the class so one by one uh, you can tell yeah first is thunderbolt among the weapon it's like best of the weapon yes. it's one a yeah. among the cows again second representation of krishna so again in the krishna loka so it's like one a yeah so, so actually a uh, calm book if you see na propas explanation it is like Cows which can be any time they do not exist in material world, and uh, they are only in spiritual world. So they are not any like material entities. Okay. Then two A then. Yeah, correct. I, I was thinking like that. Yeah, two and a best among them. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Then for the Kandar Pa, I think it's one A only. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. And Vasuki is also one A. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. Anybody wants to add anything? Perfect. You said that the uh, thunderbolt represents Krishna. Ah so, um, oh, yes. That is very spiritual. Mate, that's what we are discussing many times. Representative is everybody representing only. In this chapter, everybody representing. But whether they are directly manifestation of Krishna, like Kapila Muni, is different compared to Kandarpa. Correct, na? So that way it's different. But everybody representing Krishna in this chapter. See Thunderbolt also is representing Krishna only. That's why they are Vibhutis. Okay. Hope it is clear. Is it okay, Mathuji? Yes. Okay. Yeah. One more thing, I want to point out. Yeah. See, there may be other cows also. They may not be Surbi or Kamduk. So other cows also may be there who may. They are also representing Krishna. The normal cows. They are also representing Krishna. This is important point. So please hear attentively. So there may be other entities like among the mountains. There may be other smaller mountains, Kanchenjunga and all. They are all representation of Krishna, but 
they are not the best representation of Krishna in material world. Okay. They are even less degree. If you remember the word Prabhupada used some degree, Vibhuti means some degree, but among all the Vibhutis, Himalaya may be the highest of the degree of representation. But other mountains are lesser degree, but they are also representation of Krishna. Okay, or like here, there is activity of sex. So for that which is for procreating children, that is the representative of Krishna to the best extent. But there may be other activity which is for pleasure seeking, self gratification, that is also empowered by Krishna only, but it's not the complete representation of Krishna. It's partial, even less partial representation. That way we have to understand. So everything represents Krishna in this metal world. And Krishna has mentioned only primary of them. Okay, Pradhanata. Okay. Anantas Chasmi Naganam Varuno Yadasam Aham Pitrinam Aryam Chasmi Yamaha Samyatam Aham. Okay. Runtu, could you read? Yes, please. Of the many who did Nagas, I am Anant. And among the aquatics, I am the demigod Varun. Of departed ancestors, I am Aryan. Sorry, Aryama. And among the dispensers of law, I am Yama, the lord of death. Okay. Uh, Ishamata, you have any question? She might want to answer. Yeah, I yeah. want to try for this. Yes, okay. We'll just complete the purport. Yes. Purport. Yes, among the many who did Naga, Naga serpents, Anand is the greatest and is the and is the demigod Varun among the aquatics. They both represent Krishna. There is also a planet of Pita's ancestors presided over by Aryama who represents Krishna. There are also many living entities who give punishment to the miscreants and among them Yama is the chief. Yama is situated in, the, in a planet near this earthly planet. After death, those who are very sinful are taken there and Yama arranges different kinds of punishments for them. Okay. Yes, Mataji. Oh, yes. Here, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. One Ananta. One. Hmm. Okay. So here, Ananta is the representation means uh, he is Lord Balram himself. So it is a spiritual entity. So it is to be, and he is the controller of the class. So I think it is to be. Yeah, controller. Okay, we will become a greatest animals. Okay, I'm not sure about controller. Okay, I am not sure, so we can say both. Uh, he is himself considered as Lord, so he is Lord, yeah. He's a controller. Whether, but whether he is officially the controller also of the Nagas, I am not sure. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, yeah, next okay. So uh, the Varuna is, will he is, will be considered as a material entity and uh, best amongst the class. So one A. Yeah, correct. One. Third is Aryama. So it is also considered as material and among the best of the classes. So one A. Okay. And for fourth is Yamraj. So Yamraj will be considered as spiritual entity because he is the. Um, he is among the 12. Uh, uh, he is actually a devotee of yeah, Mahajans. Yeah. And uh, he will be also the controller of class because he is controlling everything related to his laws, according to my understanding. Mm, yeah. Among of all the regulators, um, uh, control of death. Yes. Okay. Anybody wants to comment? Uh, when we talk about Yamraj, is it a post like Indra or is it a person directly? Like yeah, when we talk post. Because it, is, it is a post. Yeah, and, post. How, and when we talk about 12 Mahajan, so Yamraj, a particular Yamraj is among 12 Mahajan. Is it like that? Yeah, Yamraj is also one of the 12 Mahajans. Yeah. So, what is the question? So, when we talk about Yam, so who is post and who is like what is what yeah one is a post so who is mahajan like that yamraj is a post a or it's a name uh, no yamraj is a person only so sometimes that post is occupied by pure devotee sometimes that post is not occupied by pure devotee okay like that so now currently they occupied by pure devotee okay very good. yeah 
So Prabhuji, shouldn't it be huh. one A? Because if it's a post, it is material. But presently, it is occupied pure devotee. So isn't it one A? And same thing I was thinking for the first part, Ananta also. Because it, we say out of the many hooded Nagas, although Ananta is spiritual, but we are talking about the Nagas, no? Uh, yeah, actually, that is eternally spiritual, Mataji. Yeah, Ananta na, is Balram, Lord Balram spiritually. Oh, sorry, eternally. Okay, so that uh, is not like post. Hmm. But yeah, Yamraj, that what you said, that, uh, that can be said as post. So it may not be always spiritual. Yeah, but uh, currently it is spiritual. So we can say one also. I'm okay with that. And Prabhuji, how is it control? I did not... Yeah, here I mean, Prabhupada is translated. Be... Huh? He is the controller because of that. The... Uh, yeah. Because of this word, we have categorized as uh, no, no. He, no, no, miss. He is uh, among the regulator. If you see the purport, no? Prabhupada has said. Um, yeah. So there are many divinities who give punishment among them. Yamiraj is the chief. And uh, then he is saying, after death, those who are very sinful, uh, so basically, he is in charge of giving punishment. So he is controlling what kind of punishment who should get. He decides. Correct. Huh? But doesn't he decide according to the laws uh, that are given by Krishna himself? That was. Ah, uh, yeah, correct. He decides as per the law only. Yeah, but he is the one who decides, no? Okay, fine. Yeah, basically, yeah, he is deciding. Na? he is the judge. He is the decision maker in that sense. According to the best of your knowledge, Prabhuji, among the Nagas also and the Yamaraj part, it is it has to be uh, first one has to be two A and last one has to be uh, C ka was C I think right two B you said okay controller is B mm -hmm. so two B yeah. it has to be two B okay. yes yes that that's what I felt yeah but yeah others also what they told that can be true yeah. two Oh, yeah, like Ananta, it can be here B also. <clears throat> That's also okay. I may not know. If somebody has the reference, then we can see if he's controller of all the Nagas. Okay. Pralada, Praladas Chasmi, Daityanam, Kala, Kaliyatam, Aham, Mriganam, Chandigam, Droham, Vainate, Ascha, Pakshinam. Please do. Among the dead uh, demons, I am the devote, devoted Prahla. Among subdivers, I am time. Among beasts, I am the lion. And among birds, I am the rear. Yes, thank you. Sir. Yeah. We'll read the purport. Yes, please. Diti and Aditi are two sisters. The sons of Aditi are called Adityas. And sons of Diti are called Adityas. All the Adityas are devotees of the Lord. And all the Adityas are assisted. Although Prahlad was born in the family of Daityas, he was a great devotee from his childhood. Because of his devotional service and godly nature, he is considered to be a representative of Krishna. There are many subduing principles, but time weighs down all things in the material universe and so represents Krishna. Of the many animals, the lion is the most powerful and ferocious. And of the million varieties of birds, Garuda, the bearer of Lord Vishnu is the greatest. Okay. okay, somebody wants to try? Yes, Deepali Mataji, you raised. Uh, yes, so, uh, the first one, that is Pralada, then it comes as spiritual and best of all, that is 2A. Hmm. Uh, the second one, among subdivers, I am time. So, time bound is in material so material and uh, the essence of active principle that is one c mm, essence of all activities material yeah, material is true where yeah, it's energy of krishna and you are among subdivers and time uh, essence uh, so is is it mentioned somewhere uh, among the names of the time goes down all See, uh, this category is of the subduer, subduing principles. Uh, yeah, so 
I think uh, may not be essence. Obviously, without time, nothing will activate. That is true in the sense. But considering the, this group, whether time is in essence of this group, I don't think so. It's not the essence of that group. It may be the best in that group. Yeah. So I think yeah, it should be one A. Okay. Yeah, next Another one. Zagin and best of all, one A. And last one, birds, Garuda, one A. Yeah, I think Garuda Prabhupada mentioned uh, yeah, it's a carry, it's a bearer of Lord Vishnu, no? As the bearer of Yeah, so it's a, yeah, he is pure devotee. Yes. Actually. So we can say it as to A. Yeah. Yes. I okay. thought again it is we should take it as general. Uh yeah, it's a, he's pure devotee. We can take it like that. Because he's carrier of Lord Vishnu, it's not ordinary living into the house. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, I wanted to say something. Ah, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, so what I can make out from the previous, last previous verses, even if we are talking about something material like bird or naga, but if it is, I mean, we are talking about these uh, things in terms of pure devotee, like Anand and Yamraj, then these. Uh, post or thing, whatever we call, it will automatically be identified as spiritual, right? Whenever, it, like in case of board also, because yeah. Aruda was mentioned there, so it is considered as, as spiritual, right? Yeah, because pure devotee of the Lord, Prahlad also, mm -hmm. they are pure devotees of the Lord, yeah, so in that sense. Yeah, it depends. So whenever a pure devotee. Yeah. yeah, it depends on how you categorize the second one. Yeah, so I have categorized categorized in that sense, pure devotee or the Vishnu Vipro. That is what I was also saying, Prabhupada. Whenever it is about the pure devotee, yeah. so it automatically becomes spiritual, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's what. Okay. And about the time, Prabhupada, I was also thinking because Lord mentions in Gita uh, that Kal is me. And we see in material world, time has a very prominent role to play because Everything is controlled by time. So sh shouldn't it be um, well, categorized as a controller? Second, one B, I thought, about yeah. the time. Yeah, what? that's what uh, we discussed. That uh, controller of all, yeah. Um, basically, the categories of the subduing principles. Like there may be some strong people who subdue others. Time subdues everyone. But uh, yeah, in one sense, time controls also everyone. But that is not the category here. Category, if it is like controlling principles, among the controlling principles and time, then time is the best of the controller. That also. But uh, I felt the other category is different here. It's about the subduing principles. Like time crushes everyone. Yeah. But uh, it also controls, but there are three modes. There are so many other things which control. Them. So in this category, I felt this way. It's not very, yeah, it's, it has to be like this only. There can be different understanding. I'm just trying to do some some kind of justice here. And don't worry, it's not going to come in your exam. So okay. yeah, yes. Yeah, last. Roji, I think uh, it's clear. I was a bit confused uh, because as Mataji said in the 11th chapter, this uh, uh, Krishna tells Kalos me that you know he is the ah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was that, yeah, a bit yeah. confused whether it should be spiritual, but uh, I understand the time is the representation of Krishna, not yeah, yeah, yeah in that sense, yeah. Many things Krishna says, I am that, I am that, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. So he is here saying, I am among the Mriga, among the all the Mrigana, I am Mrigendra, I am lion. So everything Krishna is saying, I am like that. Also, Krishna said, I am time. Yes, yes, it's clear. Yeah, it's not that time is incarnation of Krishna, like Kapila Muni. It's one of the ten incarnations. We cannot say like that. Okay. So like that. Okay. Pavana, Pavatama. So we just one thing. Ah, yes, yes. yes. Uh, these all these description examples, uh, is this for giving importance to those items, all those things represent representations or the incarnation? Is it to give importance to them or it is or is it to uh, make the living entity uh, conscious 
of those things while maybe they may see or hear so the living entity become conscious that this person like let's say banyan tree so it is connected to krishna so is it that a part or is it both uh, giving importance to those things as well as to make the conscious uh, to make the living entity conscious about all these things yeah both i think yeah both both ways giving importance as well as the primary purpose is to make the living entity conscious of that whenever you see these important things extraordinary things consider it as my energy so for the common people they can at least worship these like many people worship ashwatthama tree and devotee also respect but uh, uh, yeah that is primary purpose and also to give importance to these things because they are representing krishna in that category pavana pavatam asmi rama shastra bhritam aham yashanam akrascha asmi shrotpasam asmi janade yes please of purifiers i am the being of the builders of weapons i am ram of fishes i am the shark and of flowing rivers i am the gandhi hmm. of moving or purifying agents i am the being among bearers of weapons i am parshuram he is suitable as a vibhuti because he is an avesha avatar and because he is an outstanding jeev among those who have been given powers by the lord note ram is taken as parshuram rather than ramachandra since he is a jeeva a jeev can be a vibhuti but not the lord himself padma puran quoted in bhagavatam which says o oh devi i have decided to read the story of parshuram a shaktavish avatar of the lord and it also and it also it says he took birth as an empowered jeev the characteristics of the avesha avatar are also mentioned in the bhagavata amrit where a jeev is filled with portions of gyan shakti or other shakti of the lord who is called avesha avatar among fish jasanam i am the makar a special type of fish among rivers shrota sham i am the ganga of all the aquatic the shark is one of the biggest and is certainly the most dangerous to man does the shark represents krishna okay yes yeah. so somebody wants to try yes yeah, jashri radhana please um uh, first one is uh, wind i think this is a uh, uh, one a hmm. wind and second on the weapons in the room uh, second is uh, 2a yeah parshuram is uh, avesh avatar yes. okay yes yeah. and among all the fishes i am the shark that is also 1a hmm. uh, and last is following uh, rivers and the ganges uh, ganga is the spiritual so 2a yeah okay Yes, thank you, Mr. If anybody wants to add, comment anything. Prabhu ji, can I? I just have one doubt. Mm -hmm. What purifies the material is spiritual, right? What purifies? What purifies the material is the spiritual thing, right? Ah, ah yes, yes. Right. Then among purifier of the wind. then wind should be spiritual oh uh, yeah actually we can say like that mataji but here the category we have decided is spiritual means either pure devotee or vishnu tattva okay yeah otherwise there is no end everything will be spiritual <laughs> to make some category we have taken only these two things pure devotees or the vishnu tattva okay, okay. yeah like here parshura was explained in the purport okay like that <clears throat> लॉर्ड Uh, can you explain this like uh, what does purifier mean because uh, we have heard or read in prophet books that uh, sun sun purifies even the 
till the place even the stool mm-hmm. and when we talk about air air carries it uh, carries the aroma of such uh, nasty things so how is it one one thought i got in mind is like normally uh, something has to be produced in industry or anywhere it is first washed with water or anything is washed with water to purify to purify it or to clean it so is it in that sense or how is it can you please explain this purifier point of especially of wind purifying yeah. capacity of wind yeah yeah wind as one 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 sense you explained like yeah there is some dirty smell it will carry it away and uh, it will get clean another sense is like some objects are purified by wind like silk is there so silk is not washed uh, always to get purified it is told that silk is purified by wind itself or some woolen clothes also like they they may not be washed but they are considered pure okay especially this ration or silk so they are like that so it's not that silk should not, never be washed in a lifetime can be washed but in general silk is considered pure even after you use okay so it's purified by wind the purify for silk is wind in that sense so some items are purified by wind like that okay so i don't know exact detail why wind is chosen here but uh, these examples i understand what i okay so i think we'll pause here and continue tomorrow from 32nd onwards and then we'll start 11th chapter tomorrow okay hari krishna thank you very much shilapopad ki jai shilapopad gita ki jai